I just love it when people block sidewalks. Yeah, you know that yellow paint right there on the curb. And this scene blocking the walkway. How am I supposed to get into that parking lot? Inconsiderate of you, don't you think? Don't you? Looks like the fun got deflated. Hmm. That's a good guess on my part, I think. Ah. Uh, see, this is 23. I think it was done in 18. And they finally, they finally fixed that little square in the sidewalk. Amazing. What time will get accomplished. Will it ever go back to a 24-hour operation? I don't know. Open 24 hours a day since 1929 until 2020. Yeah, had a good run. I wonder if it ever come back to 24 hours a day. I don't know. Para uso da palavra. Few details have emerged about what BRICS leaders plan to discuss. However, expansion is expected to be high on the agenda. Some 40 nations have shown an interest in joining, either formally or informally, officials have said, including Saudi Arabia, Argentina, and Egypt. <laughs> However, there could be tensions. China wants to enlarge BRICS quickly as it tussles with the United States for geopolitical influence. Brazil is resisting, fearing the already unwieldy club could see its stature diluted. Russia is keen to bring in new members as it seeks friends amid its diplomatic isolation over Ukraine. Its most important African ally, South Africa, is on the same page. India is on the fence. What unites the bloc, though, is skepticism about a world order they see as serving the interests of the United States and its rich country allies. BRICS nations are keen to project themselves as alternative development partners to the West. The bloc's new development bank wants to de-dollarize finance <laughs> and offer an alternative to the IMF and the World Bank. However, it's only approved $33 billion of loans in nearly a decade. That's about a third of the amount the World Bank permits to dispersing just last year. The NDB has also been hobbled by sanctions on Russia. South African officials say talk of a BRICS currency, mooted by Brazil earlier this year as an alternative to dollar dependence, is off the table. Institutional development of BRICS. Nevertheless, South Africa's foreign minister, Nalendi Pandor, has said BRICS wants to show leadership particularly in terms of the development and inclusion of the global south in the multilateral systems. The theme of the Johannesburg summit is BRICS and Africa. That emphasizes how the bloc can build ties on a continent increasingly becoming a theater of competition between world powers. Coming up, how does China's flag least heavy amounts of rain and flooding rains over portions of Southern California and into Central California tonight, moving at about 20 miles per hour to the north northwest winds are currently sustained at right around 45 miles per hour. What's up next for the system? It continues to move through the north once again, unleashing showers across Central California, moving up right through the spine of Nevada. Up next tomorrow, Oregon and Idaho all the way into Montana as Monday comes to an end as a depression or a remnant low before it weekends. That said, our attention has been focused on the Pacific, but there is some action going on in the Atlantic, Eric. In fact, we have two new named storms, and there's one I definitely have my eyes on. We're tracking Tropical Storm Franklin coming up in just a few. All right, Jonathan, thanks so much. We're monitoring a developing story tonight out of DeKalb County. A heavy police presence spotted inside the Quarry apartment complex that's located near the intersection of Panola Road and I-20. Fox 5 photographer on the scene spotted DeKalb County SWAT officers inside the complex 
But so far, the DeKalb County Police Department remaining tight-lipped about just exactly what's happening. Of course, we'll continue to monitor the situation for developments on air and online. It's been 72 hours since Josiah Mitchell went missing and still no sign of that precious little two-year-old boy. Officials spent most of the last three days draining a pond in East Point where he lived nearby with his father, Artavius North. North was booked into the DeKalb County Jail Thursday for making a false statement in connection to his son's disappearance. He told police Josiah was kidnapped by armed men. Police say that was a lie. Officials say they are almost done draining the pond where North and his girlfriend lived. So far, there have been no signs <clears throat> of the toddler. School officials in Gwinnett County are trying to set the record straight following reports of a shooting during Friday night's football game. This happened between a game between Discovery High School and Central Gwinnett. The principal at Discovery High says a group of students caused panic by rushing towards an exit and says there was no shooting at the game, but he did confirm several fights took place around campus. <laughs> Thankfully, no one was injured. School officials say the game was also cut short out of an abundance of caution. So middle school in Cleveland Elementary. The little girl was later airlifted to a nearby hospital for treatment. Authorities say the incident is under investigation. Still ahead on 5 5 News Edge at 11, the U.S. State Department announcing new restrictions on a number of officials in Nicaragua. Plus, as the recovery efforts continue on the island of Maui, there are growing concerns that the drinking water may have been contaminated during the wildfire. A closer look when we return. Okay. This will be a slow drip. No matter how you like your coffee, here's Chuck to talk about TV. Hey, buddy. Hey, Chuck. So what's the scoop with the old boo to? Oh, sorry, JP. No boobs. We're a family show. Whether you're watching with the kids, a big group of friends, or just by yourself in your underpants, eating noodles, wearing your blue bathrobe that has haphazardly fallen open, exposing a stained yet humorous t-shirt, endlessly clicking through your options. That is really disturbingly specific. You didn't know I had a blue bathrobe? I didn't think you wore underpants. Touché. I am not toucheing anything. Ugh. Do you really need help deciding what to watch on television, though? Is that why you tuned in? I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm happy to help. But most of our viewers here at Sketchy TV are usually just passing through. We're like a rest stop. We sure are. A silly little rest stop they built outside of Chinatown for some reason. You know, I've watched a lot of television. And I've watched it on a lot of different televisions. And I've gotten that television delivered in many ways. Rabbit ears, antenna, cable, stolen cable, illegal satellite dish installed by some Polish guy named Joe. Yep, I've been riding the wave of upgrades for quite some time. You ever have one of those cable boxes where you could watch the adult movies, but they were all scrambled? Oh, I sure did. But you got to be careful. If you do that too much, you might go blind. Who said that? Not only are there all the ways to get television, there are endless ways to enjoy it. Old school too. Big screen, flat screen, big flat screen, big flat wide screen, big flat wide screen, plasma. I got a curved screen. Oh, cool. Is it good? Nah, the curve's in the wrong direction, so everything's like stretched out, you know? Bummer. Once you've decided on your hardware and settled on a service provider, it's important to remember one simple truth. Your whole system is probably now obsolete. I don't think so, my friend. It's 4K. Oh, you know they're up to 8K now. What? That's double the K. Yeah. I heard you can even get 12K. Triple the K? Yeah. K, K, K. Hey, hey, hey. Now that DLK has ever seen, maybe even radio has seen. Sorry. Please forgive my drive time team ignorance. Ah. It's okay, man. We good. We good? We good. We good. We good. Still hate you. But look, we haven't told the actual audience yet that we've let Master Mel and Down Like That go and that you guys are the new urban afternoon drive team. I don't follow. Urban. Oh, oh, oh. Also, why are you running an announcement campaign? No time. You people go on in six minutes. What? What do you mean, you people? 
Six minutes? Six minutes, six minutes, six minutes. Doug and Fresh, you're all. I hate you so much. But look, I'll be right back with the things you guys requested on your artist rider. Uh, grape Kool-Aid and salt and vinegar chips and your room temperature water and unsalted nuts. Uh, <laughs> these nuts! Still hate you. This isn't, uh, this isn't gonna go well. Boy, oh boy, every time I turn on the TV, there's some bozo dictator trying to pick another fight. Well, Gordo is in another fine mood today, and I have a feeling it's going to get better as we jump right into today's breakdown. I'm in a fantastic mood for somebody who's about to absolutely lose his marbles. Thank you very much. We should alert the mailroom. Letters are going to be coming in hot, especially when I introduce our first hot topic. China. Oh, China, for the love of independence already. What's your malfunction? We've already got a bad guy over there in Ruski land. They're old Vlad Putin. They're attacking the Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine. That's what I said. Oh, you said the Ukraine. It's just Ukraine. You wouldn't <laughs> say the Canada. Well, I tell you, I'm about to give you the knuckle sandwich, Boyle. Oh, well, I'm going to need something to eat if we're going to get to the end of this segment. Oh, for the love of cheese and gravy. I'm trying to tell everyone at home in the world that's had this fill of bullies and countries and trying to take over other countries. And China, you should just back off already. Oh, Taiwan. Of course, Taiwan. What do you think I meant, Saskatoon? Well, I just think the viewers like it when you get wound up there, Coach. Well, they're going the right way for record ratings then, Boyle. Okay, so let me get this straight. China should stop bullying Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And Russia should stop bullying Ukraine. That's right. And in order to get that point across, you bully me. Oh, well, what in the wide world of discourse that's going on here, Mary? Oh, my, I might be tough on you in the air because you're, you're a bit spineless, you know, and everybody's just weaker for having been around you. But I'm not about to take your home away from you because where did you slither back to? So you're saying the Ukraine and the Taiwan should slither back to their home? That's not what I said, and you know it, you slippery tongue huckster. I love Ukrainians and the Taiwanese like they're my own flesh and blood. And I'll say right here on this program that I, Coach Gordo, am lacing up my fighting boots. And I'm heading across the pond to help true blue heroes fight the good fight against those bandits. <laughs> okay, it looks like... If you had the under on Coach Gordo falling apart, you're a winner. Yahtzee to you. Thanks for joining us here on Commander's Corner. Join us next time. I'm Charlie. But don't sign anything until you've talked with us. Mm -hmm. We'll make sure you get the best possible payout. And don't take the first offer they offer you. <laughs> Noted. And if Russia does strike a satellite of ours, does that mean we'll be at war with them? Oh, it sure does, but don't you worry. It shouldn't have an immediate impact on your summer home at Lake Rosso. I don't have a summer home on Lake Rosso. You don't? Where's your summer home? I don't have a summer home. I have a home home. That's it. Well, that's sad. Does that one home fit all your Barolo? Barely. But thanks for talking with us. Best of luck with your practice. Thanks. You know, it's not all stardust and moonbeams. It's also a lot of hard work and billable hours. Yeah, but space is worth it. It's the only one we got. <laughs> Until we sue to get another. TV, I'm John Pauler, as I'm known by Turtle Clubs everywhere as the master of disguise. The perfect storm has hit the Canadian economy recently. Rising interest rates and inflation combined with higher food prices have put a stranglehold on the Canadian consumer. Where's the silver lining? Not everything is down. Food banks are kicking it with a record rise of 33%. I guess that's not really a good thing, is it? Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is condemning legislation in Ontario that would impose a contract on teachers and prevent them from striking. Trudeau, a former drama teacher and horrible makeup artist and a current drama leader, 
says suspending teachers' rights is wrong, a word he quickly admitted was hurtful and triggering to those in the non-correct community. He apologized and spent the rest of the day in a timeout. As Russian missiles take out Ukraine's infrastructure, much of the country has been left with no electricity, low food supplies, and no running water in Kyiv. When asked how you could do such a thing to your geographical brothers, a defiant Putin said, I know I am, but what are you? Trump asked the Supreme Court to block the House committee from getting his tax returns. First of all, they're written in Russian. It's about an inch of Big Mac sauce on them. And lastly, I gave you those jobs for this very reason. And finally, an iPhone factory in China has been hit hard with the COVID virus. The plant has over 200,000 workers, and they've begun to flee. Chinese officials say the virus could spread like an iPhone. Quick at first, but a year later, so slow that you can't wait to get a new virus. The dub.